Today we're going to talk about a video that I released a few weeks ago stating that Google are not going to block sideloading on their devices. This was in response to Google stating they would require all app developers to verify themselves before they're able to install an app on an Android device, even through sideloading, which is a way of installing an app on an Android device without going through the Google Play Store. Now, this raised a lot of comments where many of you thought that this is it. It's the end of sideloading on Android devices. But as I did say in the video that I believed there would be a workaround for this. And even before this program has been rolled out, Google have confirmed themselves that there is still going to be a way of installing apps on an Android device without the developer needing to verify their apps. So today I'm going to demonstrate this workaround that Google have confirmed. So first of all, let's take a look at what of Google have actually said. Now, in their frequently asked questions in the Android developer developer verification page on their developer's website, there is a question which says, will Android debug bridge ADB install work without registration? And their answer to that is, as a developer, you are free to install apps without verification with ADB. This is designed to support developers need to develop test apps that are not intended or not yet ready to distribute to the wider consumer population. And that was last updated on the 3rd of September, 2025. Now, going on further at the bottom there, it says, if I want to modify or hack some APK and install it on my own device, do I have to verify? And their answer is apps installed using ADB won't require verification. And as I say, today I'm going to demonstrate how you can do this. So first of all, open up your browser, any browser, I'm using Edge. So if you want to follow me completely, then use Edge. And once this is opened, then you want to go to the address bar right at the top of the screen, not the search bar in the middle, but the address bar at the top. And if there's anything in it, click in it and delete it out. And then you need to type in there, cwtek.co.uk forward slash WD, just as it's shown on the screen right now. Pause this video if you need to make a note of this. Once you've typed it in and you've double checked it's correct, press enter or return on your keyboard. Then if you've typed the correct address, you should see this here. Scroll down until you get to Windows Tools for Fire Stick stroke Android TV and you want to left click once on Flaky's ADB GUI 2.1. Once you clicked on that, it should download. It should only take a few seconds. It's only small. Then you want to click on ADB stroke SCR CP. PY. And again, that's a left click and that will download. Now, if you're in Edge like I am, you can click on this little downloads folder icon there. If you're not, then just go into Explorer. And then what you want to do is you want to just find the downloads folder, which should be on the left. And then you should see these two downloads in here. So first of all, I'm going to right click on this one here that says flaky ADB GUI. So right click on that and then you should get this menu come up, left click extract all and it's going to ask you where do you want to extract it to. So I'm going to click on browse just over there on the left. I'm going to find my desktop, which again is over there on the left, left click once on that and then click on new folder just up there. And we're going to call this Flakey's ADB, just as I've shown on the screen there. Then click select folder and click select folder again. OK, and then we should have here uh, desktop slash flakies ADB. Make sure you've got that and then click on extract. And then we just want to close this first window down here just by clicking on the cross. And then we want to go to SCR CPY and right click on that and then left click extract all. And then we, we'll get this box up, click on browse, click on desktop and then click on Flakey's ADB, that should be a double click and then click select folder and then make sure you've got desktop Flakey's ADB just there. Click on extract and there we go. We've got all of our files all together where we need them 
to be able to use this application. The next thing we want to do is we want to just close all these windows down. So click on the cross just to get rid of all of these windows. And then we should have a folder on our desktop that says Flakies ADB. So double left click that and then double left click Flaky ADB GUI. Now it might say that um, it puts your PC at risk. Don't worry, it doesn't. So if you get this message, click on more info and then click run anyway. Now we want to click locate ADB and then we want to double click ADB just there. OK, so now we need to go across to the Android device. And when we're in there, we just need to go up and across to the settings cog just over there on the right and then go into all settings. Then we need to go down to system and then across and down to about. Go into about and then we want to go down to where it's got the Android TV OS build. With that highlighted, locate the middle button on the remote control. Now that is in the center of the circle on your remote control and just keep pressing it like a mouse until you see you are now a developer, then you can stop pressing it. Then we need to press the back button on the remote once and then we need to go down to developer options and then go across and then down to debugging. And we need to highlight USB debugging or debugging. And here on mine, it says debug mode when USB is connected. Now, don't worry about this. You don't need to connect a USB to it. It's a bit misleading this. Just turn this on, turn on USB debugging. You'll get this allow USB debugging. USB debugging is intended for development purposes only. Use it to copy data between your computer and your device. Install apps on your device without notification and read log data. So make sure that OK is highlighted, middle button, and there you go. Make sure that that is switched on. Let's just press the back button twice. And then we want to go up to network and internet. Now find the network that says connected underneath it. And then you should see IP address. Now what you're looking for is sets of numbers. So as you can see under IP address, I have 192.168.10.233. Yours will be something different, but you do need to make a note of this. So I'm just going to go back to the computer and I'm going to click into remote IP. Now, I should have said this earlier, but you should be on the same network. You cannot do this if you're on a different network to your Android device. So make sure you're on the same Ethernet network or the same Wi-Fi network. It doesn't matter if your computer is on Ethernet and your your Android TV device is on Wi-Fi, just as long as it's on the same network, that's absolutely fine. So let's just click into remote IP and type in the IP address that was below IP address. That is the sets of numbers only, no letters. Okay, so in my case, it was 192.168.10.233. Go into remote port, click into there, and type in there 5555 and then hopefully you should have two ticks there. Now, this these ticks don't actually mean that the address you're typing in is correct, but it's just checking. It's just saying it is in the right format. So what we want to do now is we want to click on connect ADB device. So left click once on that and you should see come up on the Android device. This just here that says allow USB debugging. Now you can put a tick in uh, always allow from this computer. That will stop that from coming up in future. Then go down to allow middle button and that should now be connected. Let's go back to the PC and it's got their list of devices attached and it says it's unauthorized. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to click refresh device list and now it is actually connected. What do we do to install an, a, an APK file? So first of all, Let's just open our browser. We're going to go up to the address bar in the top of the screen, not the search bar in the middle of the screen, and type in there cwtek.co.uk 
forward slash D. Pause this video if you need to write this down. Once you've typed that in and you've double checked it, press enter or return on your keyboard. And then if you've typed in the address correctly, you should see this. So I'm just going to scroll down and I'm going to install TV Bro. I'm just going to click on TV Bro there and that should then download it to my computer and hopefully it should download it to the downloads folder. I'm going to come out of the browser once it's downloaded and go back to the flakies and what I'm going to do is I'm going to click install an APK, just the circle just to the left of install an APK. Then I'm going to click locate file and then I'm going to find downloads and I'm going to click on the download that I just downloaded. That's a double click. And then I'm going to click on the little drop down just to the right of select device and I'm going to select the IP address that I typed in just up there. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get the Android device back on the screen so you can see this. And I'm going to go back. I'm going to go right the way back to the main screen. And let's just go down and I'm just going to go across to the very end. You don't need to do this, but I'm just showing you this part for illustration purposes. So, OK, I'm going to click on run command now on Flakies and let's see what happens. And there you go. I've got performing streamed install success. And as you can see now on the Android TV device, TV Bro has appeared at the end. So I'm going to select that, go into it. And there you go. It's loaded. We've officially side loaded that from the computer through the Wi-Fi and into the Android TV device. And as I say, that way, will not check the APK for any kind of developer verification. So it bypasses that check. So it still means that you can download and install apps onto your Android TV device. Now, as I say, there are other ways you can do this through a Mac, also through an Android phone and maybe even an iPhone or an iPad, certainly a tablet. And I'm going to be looking into these ways and I'm going to be releasing videos which show you how to do that at a later date. So please make sure if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button to subscribe to this channel so you find out about those videos as soon as they're released. Now, one last thing before I go, if you want to save all these settings, then all you do is just click on file just up there in the top left hand corner. Click on save default settings just there. And then in the bottom right hand corner under additional applications options, then make sure there's a tick next to load defaults on startup. And then what will happen now is, is when we close down, let's just disconnect from the Android device. And then if we open back up again, there you go. It's remembered all the details. Now, at times the IP address may change, but you can obviously change that as and when you need to, and then just go up to file and save default settings. And uh, that will remember all the settings to save you having to type them all in again.